Welcome. I'm Pastor Malcolm Bull of the New Life Church in uh, Hegley with all. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to, as you join with us today and to uh, just to be a part of our time of worship together with this online service. Uh, of course, we're going to first of all have a time of song worship and then we'll obviously uh, pray together. What a privilege it is to be able to be able to pray and talk to the Lord personally. But we also want to bring a bit of a news update of what's been happening in the church over the past uh, few weeks. Uh, we're obviously going to listen to the word of God and uh, be refreshed by that and challenged hopefully as well, of course. But the, now, first of all, let's worship together with this first song called One Way. Jesus said himself clearly that he is the way, the truth and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through him. Let's just worship God as we sing this song, One Way. Thank God for the truth of that song, One Way. For it was Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. He is the way. Praise God. Now, we've listened to and sung that song, of course, and worshipped God with that song. Let's just listen to Rachel with a somewhat of a church uh, update 
of what is taking place. So just here to give you a bit of an update of what is taking place and has been happening in the church over the last few weeks. For those of you that have not been able to gather with us and you continue to uh, watch and enjoy our online services, we just wanted to update you with what has been taking place. So we have been gathering as a church now back physically in the church building since Easter and it's been so great to be able to do so. We still have these restrictions in place but it is wonderful to be able to just gather with one another and just to meet as a church family. So if you've not been able to join us and you would like to, we uh, meet at 10.30 on a Sunday morning just for the hour. And while the weather is nice, uh, we are able to also gather for uh, refreshments outside uh, on the front church car park. We have an opportunity there just to be able to uh, chat with one another um, and to encourage each other also. The young people have been meeting on a Sunday evening at 7.15 for Youth Alpha. Uh, this is their third week now and that is going great. It's been uh, great just to be able to gather our young people together, um, for them to have their own opportunity uh, to uh, just to be encouraged and just to work through some of these big questions of faith. Um, so uh, continue to pray for them as they meet on a Sunday evening. Our baby and toddler group started back uh, just before the half term holiday, so this was our third week of being back and we're seeing 15 families gathering on a Wednesday morning. Again, measures are in place to ensure everybody's safety, but the feedback has been great from families, uh, from parents and carers, just saying how great it is to be able to, just to meet together for the children to be able to come out and socialize. So it's wonderful that we've been able to open our church buildings again to uh, welcome the community in, to be able to use it as a facility where families can gather. Uh, and then on Thursday this past week, we launched our church cafe. So if you are free on a Thursday afternoon at two o'clock, come down, maybe you have a friend or a neighbour, maybe you haven't really emerged properly from lockdown, still a little bit cautious about doing so and meeting in public places, come down, it's a safe environment, but we want to be able to talk, have an opportunity to connect with you, um, maybe know somebody that might that lives alone and they could benefit from an afternoon of just having a couple of hours of conversation and a, and a cup of tea. It's two till four Thursdays. Uh, if you would like to, to come along to that, just uh, text or telephone the number that's on the screen to just book your place. Now also, um, Pastor last week spoke on the parable of the Good Samaritan, talking about showing kindness and compassion for others. We just want to share with you um, about Sam, one of, the young, one of our young members in the church. He has a story where he has shown uh, compassion and kindness and gone out of his way uh, to do something very good. So last sa uh, Saturday, he decided to climb Snowdon. And the reason for that was to raise money for cancer research. Uh, he achieved it, he got to the top, and we're all extremely proud of his achievement. But here is Sam in his own words saying why he did it. Hey guys, and um, so you know recently I've climbed Snowden for cancer research. And um, the reason I did it is because, well, my friend... My friend's nan and grandna died because of cancer and it made him, his whole family like really sad and so I just don't want other families going through that suffering. So I decided to climb it for cancer research. So I climbed it and well, um, I found it quite hard but you know, I kept on going and I did it luckily. And I've raised £2,000, uh, including gift aid, I think. So thank you everyone so much. I mean, it's such a big, big deal for me and Thomas's family. So thank you so much. It means a lot. Bye. So a big well done to Sam. We are super proud of him. I know his family are, but as a church family, we are as well. Sam showed concern and uh, he wanted to do something, make a difference, and he did and he raised an amazing £2,000 for cancer research. I'm sure that will go um, into making a difference um, into the research and uh, hopefully finding a cure for this awful, awful 
uh, disease and illness that uh, just affects so many families. Now we're going to move on and we're going to come to the time where we have listened to the word of God, which is brought to us today by Ken, our elder. So let's just pray before we do that. Lord, we thank you that we gather and we can listen to the word of God right now and be encouraged by it. Lord, we just pray that we listen with um, open hearts and, and ears that are listening to what is said to us, Lord, and may we respond to it. And Lord, we just ask that you will just be present with us in our homes by the Holy Spirit as we just listen to your word today. Amen. Well, good day, everybody, and God bless you. And thank you for joining me today as we look into the Word of God and tune into what the Holy Spirit wants to impart to us today and what he wants to give to each and every one of us. Um, my thoughts this week are around Bible characters and those in the Bible that we look at as great men and great women of God um, and think of them something, sometimes as being sort of super people or super beings, um, but to realise that they were just ordinary people, just like you and I, but chosen by God. And as such, they had the same problems and the same times in their life when things went wrong uh, and when they was very down um, and when they perhaps felt far away from God. And so the character that we want to look at from the Old Testament is one of the greatest prophets that was chosen by God. And we find that the prophets had their down times as the apostles did in the New Testament. And so we find that the one that we're going to look at today was really on a, a downer in his life. The man we're talking about is Elijah. Uh, but to just say, so often for people in the Bible and for ourselves, we come to a downtime when we've just previous to that been on a, a high time when things have been good in our life and things have been going well uh, and we think everything is great and then suddenly it takes a nosedive and things are not so well. This was the case with Elijah. If we read in the previous chapter from which we're going to read, we find that he just had two uh, great and wonderful happenings in his life whereby he would, he'd done the will of God, he'd done everything that the Lord asked of him and he'd had great success in that. And the one was when he took on the uh, prophets of Baal, um, if you remember and you know the story, when they both built an altar with a sacrifice to their gods and then asked that their sacrifice be consumed by fire and accepted by their god and we find that the prophets of Baal had no success whereby um, Elijah had great and wonderful success with his, uh, ex his sacrifice being accepted and it was consumed by fire and then uh, Elijah and those followers uh, of his went and they slew the prophets of Baal. Then just after that he was instrumental of God in bringing about the end to a drought that had been in the land and he had, uh, when he had seen that small cloud that it was about to happen uh, ran before the chariots of Ahab um, back to Jezreel and the deluge came down. And so he had success in his life just prior, prior to that. But that success now was about to go hill, downhill very fast. So we're going to pick up with a reading from 1 Kings and chapter 19. And we're going to read a whole 18 verses um, just to uh, complete this story of... Um, Elijah being so down, but I'm not just going to tell you about um, the man being down, but how God then brought him back and restored him. And so we'll start reading then at verse 1 of chapter 19. And Ahab told Jezebel 
all that Elijah had done and how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone, alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came and said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenants, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive there, anoint Hazel as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Malola, you shall anoint as prophet of in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the word of Zael, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. And so where we see then this prophet very much down and very much not in a good place, particularly in that verse 4. And I'd just like to pick up certain of these verses that as we go along and points that I want to bring so that we can draw a parallel for ourselves and our life when looking at this man, Elijah. But we find in verse 4 where he says he prays that he might die and then said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life for I am no better than my father's. And if we really analyse that, we could say that Elijah was suicidal at this point. He wanted his life to end, an end to his life, and an end to his problems and his troubles. 
Well, you not, might not be in that place exactly, you might not be suicidal, but you possibly have your problems and your troubles. And along with that, you know, you could be feeling um, that perhaps not suicidal, but very much you've got the D's and the D's being down, distressed, despised, discouraged and despondent. You might be able to identify with some of those things that we have said. And so you feel uh, somewhat like Elijah, that you are down. You might have gone through a good period in your life, but now you're in a place where you feel that, you know, perhaps there's no future. It's calm, it's gone, uh, and you, you can identify with those things that we've outlined. You feel down, perhaps down, or distressed, or depressed, discouraged, or despondent. But you know, the Lord knows about that. And at this point, we have a text from Psalm 34 and 17, which reads, The righteous cry out, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. And just like the Lord knew all about Elijah, he knows all about you. He knew all about Elijah's problems, how he felt. He knows about you and equally how you feel. And so as we read on, we go down to that verse 6, where although Elijah doesn't realise it at this moment in time, the Lord is preparing him to bring him out and for him to be restored as a prophet with a new future and a new journey. And so we find that the Lord does what is necessary for him, for him to go on this journey to move away from this wilderness position and sleeping under this broom tree, that the Lord prepare, prepares him with what is necessary. And what is necessary first at this moment is in time is food and drink. And we find that an angel is sent to him which touches him and says, Arise and eat. This is verse 5. Verse 6 then says, And he looked up, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And it goes on to say, The angel of the Lord came back the second time, touched him and said, Arise and eat, because your journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food, 40 days, 40 nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. So we see that he had started to move out from this position. The Lord had started to move him out. But before that, he gave him what was necessary. He gave him food and drink. Now, the Lord will give to you that which is necessary for you to move you on possibly in your life, to bring you out of possibly the situation that you are in. Now, you might not need a, a, a cake baked on coals or a jar of water. You might not even need a cup of tea and a biscuit in bed. But what you possibly do need is spiritual food. And the Lord has supplied that to us. He has given to us his word and the encouragement and guidance of his word. Along with his word, he has given to us the Holy Spirit, that which is necessary, that presence that we can have of the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and to move us out from that position that we're in. We have that spiritual food he has provided for us. And we have a scripture to back that up in Philippians 4 and 19, which reads, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He will supply and meet our needs, whatever it is. As I say, possibly not as Elijah needed it, but the Lord knows what we have need of to move on and to be restored and he will provide that for us, as he did for Elijah. We move on then from that, and we find that 
after he had gone on this journey um, to Horab, that he came into a cave and spent the night in that place. And there he was spoken to by the word of the Lord, who said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Now, we find at this moment in time that Elijah has the opportunity. The Lord has given him an invitation. What are you doing here, he asks him. And so we find that Elijah has this chance to tell the Lord his troubles, how he feels. He has a pity party. Self-pity comes in where he says to the Lord, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenants, torn down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. And he pours it out to the Lord. And I'm not putting him down for that because he was a man greatly troubled at this moment in time. And sometimes it is good for us to pour out our hearts, how we feel to the Lord. You might say to him, well, the Lord knows about that. He knows everything all about me anyway. Yes, he does. But it's sometimes it is, it is good for us just to let it go, get it off our chest, as you might say, and tell the Lord exactly how we feel uh, about our situation. And the Lord invites, he will listen. As it says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears, our text says. He will listen to our, how we feel, as maybe we want to pour out our hearts to him, telling him how we feel. But then we go on and find that... We come to a passage of scripture that's quite well known, where the Lord then does something about this situation. And he said, then he said, go and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake. The Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. But after the fire, it's a still, small voice. Now, at this moment in time, Elijah probably didn't want to hear from God, as perhaps Moses, previous to him, had heard, in a great and tremendous way. What Elijah needed was, as it were, the Lord to put an arm around him, to draw him close and speak to him in that still small voice, a small, gentle voice and in a gentle way. The Lord had shown his might and his power in the wind and in the earthquake and in the fire. But the Lord was not in this for Elijah, but he was in that still small voice gentle voice and going back to verse 9 where he first asks what are you doing here Elijah I believe it was in that still small gentle voice as he spoke I had, had that word gentle because that is how I see God at this moment in that still small voice and it goes on to say so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave and again the Lord speaks in that still small voice a voice came to him and said to him what are you doing here e Elijah and the Lord sometimes speaks to us by the Holy Spirit in that same still small gentle voice and so let us not always think that we have to look to the wind, the earthquake and the fire. It doesn't always have to be a great and majestic voice and a great and wonderful happening. Sometimes the Lord speaks to us in a very gentle way, in a still, small voice. Maybe the Lord will speak to you today in that gentle, small voice. Not my voice, but the voice of the Holy Spirit. I only bring the word to you and an explanation of what that still small voice was all about. It was what Elijah needed at that time, how he needed to, the Lord to speak to him. And the Lord will speak to you in a way that you need, and you need the Lord to 
speak and encourage and help you. A scripture that we have in Matthew, in, um, sorry, in, um, yes, Matthew 11 and verses 28 and 30 reads, Come to me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I, this is Jesus saying this, I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He does not put anything heavy upon us when we need that which is gentle. Jesus comes to us in a gentle way by the Holy Spirit and speaks to us in that same way. And so as we move on from that we find that again he is asked what are you doing here Elijah? And again he repeats that what he had said previous about being zealous to the Lord of hosts, about the children of Israel forsaking the covenants, tearing down the altars, killing the prophets and he said that I alone am left and they seek to take my life. But this moment then the Lord seeks to move him on. He takes him into a new position, a new beginning, a new future. He restores him as a prophet and gets work for him and shows work and instructs him in work that he should do as the prophet. He again becomes the prophet as the Lord says to him, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus and when you arrive anoints Hazael as king over Syria. So he begins to do his prophet work again. He anoints one over the king of Syria and anoints Jehu as the son of Nimshai as king over Israel. So he anoints two kings. Then he, he said, anoint Elisha in your place. He's the prophet that is coming after you. So the future is la laid out. Elijah knows what the future is, what's the future and who will take over uh, from him. And it uh, goes on to say that the work that they will do. And maybe it is that you need a new beginning, a new work, a new future. You have felt down, you have felt despondent because your life is where it is. But the Lord is saying to you, I still have things for you to do. I still have a future. I still have a new journey uh, for you. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19 reads, Behold, the Lord says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, and shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You might have thought that you're finished. You know, there's no future. There's nothing much left for you or in your life or because of things that have happened, you don't see a future. It looks hard and impossible. But the Lord says, I'm the one that can make a road in the wilderness, if necessary, and rivers of living water, even in the desert. This is almighty God. And so it says to you, you know, he knows what you have need of. He knows and he can bring about that in your life. Look to him then. Listen to that still, small voice of the Holy Spirit as it speaks to you. Our last point then for today is found in this very last verse, which reads the Lord saying to Elijah again, Yet I reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that have not kissed him. He suddenly finds that instead of one, he's got 7,000 mates, 7,000 people who believe and have the same heart as what he has for the Lord God Almighty and not for Baal. He's not alone. The Lord has not left him on his own. He has provided these 7,000 to be like-minded and like-hearted to what he is. And the Lord doesn't leave you on your own. However you might feel, you are not on your own. You are not alone, for the Lord is with you. For our final scripture, then we emphasise this point from Hebrews 
of chapter 13 and 5, which reads, For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. What a wonderful scripture and a wonderful thought then to finish up this time that we have spent together in the word of God with, that he, he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he will speak to you. Speak in that still, small voice. Come alongside of you, almost as it were, to put his arm around you and to say, and let you speak to him, to tell him your problems, your troubles, what brings you down. But also, as he did with Elijah, to do something about it, to move you out from that position where you are, to give you that new future, that new start, that new beginning, restore you, if that is what is necessary in your life. I trust then, as we've shared these scriptures, uh, that today, that it has been a help to you, and the Lord will speak to you by the Holy Spirit. I've just tried to be obedient to what the Lord has laid upon my heart, but he's the one that speaks into your heart, through his word maybe that we've read today. But listen out then for that still, small voice within yourself of the Holy Spirit. Don't always be looking for the wind, earthquake and fire, but be prepared to listen for that still, small voice as the Lord speaks to you to lead you and to guide you in the future that he has for you. So God bless you. I just pray that this will be a help and a blessing to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you care for us equally as much as you did for that great prophet of yours, Elijah. So you care for us equally. And Lord, you care about our situation, our problem, our trouble. And you are prepared, Lord, to do something about that in our life and for us. So Lord, we just pray that each one of us will be attuned and listening in for the still small voice as you speak by your Holy Spirit through your word to us. And Lord, we look forward to what you want to do in ourselves, in our life, in our church. Lord, we just pray, we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Your still small voice, it calls to me And it brings me to my knees Through the wind and rain, you've sheltered me Speaking words of life again And your love keeps calling me be my God Your love is so near to me You will always have my heart
my God Your love so near to me You will always have my heart We thank God for the words of the song and the truth and the understanding of what it all means. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak deep within us for that still, small voice. He wants to lead us, direct us, guide us, use us for his glory. So I hope you've been blessed and encouraged today. You know, we want you to be blessed and obviously encouraged, but also challenged as well. It's important for us to be challenged in our life. And so I hope we've been able to do that and be a source of that uh, for you today. God bless you. Have a great week. As I often say, serve the Lord with all of your heart. Give him your best, for he certainly did that for us on Calvary. God bless you.